when the president issued EO number 13, providing for the term online gaming for the very first time. Don't you think, Attorney Roque, that the president legislated? Again, Your Honor, I am unable to answer because that is not within my expertise. I have mentioned that my expertise is in the field of public international law, having taught and practiced that. And I am sorry because I am not very familiar with Executive Order Number 13. In with all due respect to our resource speaker, Mr. Chair, I find it strange na sa dami po ng hearing na inaattendan niya, both in the Senate and in the Congress, all pertaining to BOGOS, he have not come across EO number 13, from which the BOGOS or the online gaming started. Mr. Chair, there's a principle in law. When the law does not provide, we should not provide. When the law does not include, we should not include. If the substantive law creating PAGCOR does not provide for online gaming, then no executive issuances should provide for online gaming. Let us all be reminded by the little legal maxim, Enclusio unios est exclusio alterios. Kung wala naman pong sinabi dun sa substantive law, then the procedural law should not provide. Chair, let us I wish to state for the record that when the president issued executive order number 13, it is the humble submission of this representation. He legislated. He amended. He repealed the law. An act which violates the fundamental principle of separation of power. The executive should not encroach upon the power to legislate that belongs exclusively to the Congress. And then under Section 4, Mr. Chair, it emphasizes the oversight function of the office of the president over all forms of gaming, and that includes online gaming. I humbly submit, Mr. Chair, that EO number 13 brings online gambling into life. Enzo Recto, kalaban ang katiwalian at kasinungalinga, kakampi sa katotohanan at kabutihan. Nangangayon itong si Harry Roque sa galing ng kongresistang abogado. Nang tanongin mismo siya patungkol kay Duterte. Tinanong kasi nitong si Congresswoman Listro itong si Roque kung bakit nakialam itong si Duterte noon na gawing legal itong pogo at ang mga online gambling dito sa bansa. Ayon sa paliwanag nitong si Kong Listro. Hindi po kasi pwedeng baguhin ang batas na ginawa at inamiyandahan ng lehistratora ng isang executive or taga pagtupad ng batas tulad ng isang pangulo. Ngayon, may dinagdag or may binago daw mismo si Duterte noon para maging legal itong pogo at ang mga online gambling dito sa bansa. Which is bawal dahil tanging senador at mga kongresista lang ang dapat magbago at gumawa ng batas. Dahil tagapagtupad lang ng batas ang dapat gawin ng Pangulo, na supalpal at naging tahmime at hindi maipagtanggol ngayon ni Roque ang kanyang amo na si Digong Duterte sa banat nitong kongresista para po sa mga kaganapan sa Kamara, panuorin po natin ito. Okay, thank you so much Congressman Bosita. Uh, the, the Chair uh, recognize uh, Congresswoman uh, Jinky uh, Luistro. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I wish to address my question to Attorney Harry Roque. With all due respect, Attorney, Mr. Chair, this is a common knowledge that Attorney Harry Roque worked as the spokesperson for former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Does our resource speaker confirm this? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, Ma Mr. Mr. Chair. And Mr. Chair, can we please direct the resource speaker to describe ano po ba ang trabaho ng isang resource speaker ng Presidente? As spokesperson, I was addressing the uh, Malacadang Press Corps three times a week. I was preparing press releases on behalf of the President, and I was uh, answering queries from the media 
on behalf of the president. And will the resource speaker agree if I would say that a spokesperson position is a position of trust and confidence? Yes, Mr. Chair. And by position of trust and confidence, it means that the president is giving you his full trust and confidence in all matters that might be within or even relevant to the discharge of your function as presidential spokesperson. Does the resource speaker agree? Mr. Uh, Chairman, subject to regular consultations with the president. And for the information of the committee, by the position of trust and confidence, it means that the moment the president lost the trust and confidence to the person, he can any time terminate this official. I confirm that, Mr. Chairman. I was uh, appointed to a position with the rank of cabinet member. I understand as well that Attorney Roque is one of the seasoned lawyers, as a matter of fact, internationally. Can you please enlighten us on your background as a lawyer? I have been teaching international law in UP as well as in American University and National University of Singapore, total of more than 20 years already until now, and I was past president of the Asian Society of International Law. I'm also a member of the List Council of the International Criminal Court. And having earned that um, reputation in the legal circle, Mr. Chair, and being the presidential spokesperson as well, I would assume that if ever there will be erroneous decisions on the part of the president, Attorney Harry Roque will be calling the attention and correcting or perhaps stopping the president from pursuing such erroneous action. Will the resource speaker agree to this? I do not think I had that function. I could only speak for the president. I could not actually countermand him. I could not correct him. He is my principal. But considering, Mr. Chair, that he is a lawyer and a spokesperson as well, pagka ba may maling desisyon ang presidente, will you not volunteer your legal expertise to correct the president? Unless I am asked for my opinion, uh, Mr. Chair, I will not volunteer, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, I wish to invite the attention of Attorney Harry Roque to PD 1869. This is described as the Charter of Pagor. And as a matter of fact, it defines what illegal gambling is. I also wish to invite his attention to Republic Act Number 9487, which extends the franchise of PAGCOR to another 25 years. Again, it defines what illegal gambling is. Ultimately, Mr. Chair, I wish to invite the attention of Attorney Roque to Executive Order Number 13. And I wish to state for the record, Mr. Chair, that for the very first time, the term online gaming was mentioned in Executive Order number 13. This is something which is not mentioned, which is not provided in PD 1869, as well as in RA 9487. May I ask the resource speaker, when the president issued executive order number 13, don't you think he legislated? I am unable to make uh, an opinion because when I was uh, a spokesperson, legal matters such as these are directed to the uh, Presidential Legal Council or to the Office of the Solicitor General or to the Legal Office of the Office of the President under the Executive Secretary. Mr. Chair, this representation wishes to solicit the opinion of a legal expert, our resource speaker, Attorney Harry Roque. I am sure that with the number of hearings he went through already, he has come across Executive Order Number 13. 
This is the presidential issuance during the time of former President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, mentioning the term online gaming for the very first time. The term that was never mentioned in PD-1869 and even in RA-9487. I hope we can be enlightened by the legal expertise of our resource speaker. When the president issued EO number 13, providing for the term online gaming for the very first time, don't you think, Attorney Roque, that the president legislated? Again, Your Honor, I am unable to answer because that is not within my expertise. I have mentioned that my expertise is in the field of public international law, having taught and have practiced that. And I am sorry because I am not very familiar with Executive uh, Order Number 13. In fact, my only knowledge of Executive uh, Order Number 13 was in the last hearing when uh, former Chair Domingo said that um, President um, Duterte regulated um, uh, online gambling, no? through um, Executive Order Number 13. But I am unable to uh, give uh, an opinion now, not being thoroughly familiar with the EO, as well as um, the um, underpinnings behind the issuance of Executive Order Number 13. I'm so sorry, Your Honor, it's not within my field of expertise. With all due respect to our resource speaker, Mr. Chair, I find it strange na sa dami po ng hearing na inaattendan niya, both in the Senate and in the Congress, all pertaining to BOGOS, he have not come across EO number 13, from which the BOGOS or the online gaming started. But I'm sure, for the next concern that I wish to raise, our resource speaker is very much familiar with, because this is fundamental in the study of law. There is in law the principle of separation of powers. And I wish to share the case of Belhica versus Ochoa, GR number 208-566, November 19, 2013, on the constitutionality of the Priority Development Assistance Fund. For the information of the Filipino people, I wish to read the principle of separation of powers refers to the constitutional demarcation of the three fundamental powers of the government. In the celebrated words of Justice Laurel in Angara versus Electoral Commission, it means that the Constitution has blocked out with deaf strokes and in bold lines, allotment of power to the executive, the legislative, and the judicial departments of the government. To the legislative branch of the government, through Congress, belongs the power to make laws. To the executive branch of the government, through the president, belongs the power to enforce laws. To the judicial branch of government, through the court, belongs the power to interpret laws. I wish to go back to Attorney Roque. Attorney Roque, don't you think that the president encroach upon the power of the Congress when he issued Executive Order Number 13 providing for online... Well, Mr. Chair, first and foremost, I argued that case of Belica. I was lawyer um, in the Supreme Court for uh, Mr. Belica, and I confirmed the principle of separation of powers. However, as I said, although it is not my expertise, I will give uh, my, my opinion, my candid opinion. And that is, under our scheme of things, executive issuances, legislative uh, enactments are all presumed to be constitutional unless proven otherwise. So the status of uh, Executive Order Number 13, unless challenged in court, is that it is presumed to be constitutional. Executive orders being the nature of implementing existing legislation, Your Honor. Mr. Chair, there's a principle in law when the law does not provide, we should not provide. When the law does not include, we should not include. If the substantive law creating PAGCOR does not provide for online gaming, then no executive issuances should provide for online gaming. Let us all be reminded by the legal maxim. 
Incluso unios. Es excluso alterios. Kung wala naman pong sinabi dun sa substantive law, then the procedural law should not provide. Let us be reminded that the procedural law should always yield in favor of the substantive law. Mr. Chair, I wish to invite the attention of the committee to Executive Order Number 13, the presidential issuance which provides for the very first time for the term online gaming, the term that was never mentioned in the legislation that was passed by Congress. In the eight whereas clause, it says, clarifying the extent of authority of gambling regulators, particularly with regards to online gaming. And then we have section three, clarification on online gambling, which technically defines what online gambling is. And then under section four, Mr. Chair, it emphasizes the oversight function of the office of the president over all forms of gaming, and that includes online gaming. I humbly submit, Mr. Chair, that EO number 13 brings online gambling into life. And I do not understand, Mr. Chair, why this should circumvent the law that was passed by Congress creating the PAGCOR and providing the authorities to regulate all the gaming and gambling activities. Once again, Mr. Chair, I wish to raise the reason why the principle of separation of powers is very important. The principle of separation of powers and its concepts of autonomy and independence stem from the notion that the powers of the government must be divided to avoid concentration of these powers in any one branch. The division, it is hoped, would avoid any single branch from lording its power over the other branches or the citizenry. To achieve this purpose, the divided power must be wielded by co-equal branches of government that are equally capable of independent action in exercising their respective mandates. Lack of independence would result in the inability of one branch of government to check the arbitrary or self-interest assertions of another or others. To wind up, Mr. Chair, I wish to state for the record that when the president issued executive order number 13, it is the humble submission of this representation. He legislated, he amended, he repealed the law, an act which violates the fundamental principle of separation of power. The executive should not encroach upon the power to legislate that belongs exclusively to the Congress. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you uh, so much, uh, Congresswoman uh, Jinky uh, Luistro. So in other words, uh, PAGCOR. <laughs> Ang daming online gaming. <laughs> Hindi lamang pogo. Anong salita na ang ibig sabihin dito ay ang pagkakaisa Bunyog Party List Halika na, halika na, Bunyog Party List ka na Halika na, halika na, Bunyog Party List ka na Sa susunod, ang atinang suportahan, Bunyog Party List Nagtataguyod ng katotohanan, lumalaban para sa bayan